Tonight we continue our series of interviews in connection with the primary for an open seat in the state Senate. This is for the seat in the 1st Suffolk and Middlesex District, recently vacated by Anthony Petroselli. In the city, the district includes East Boston, Beacon Hill, the North End, and Chinatown. Our guest is one of the Democrats running in the primary on April 12th. We'd like to welcome State Representative Jay Livingstone. Uh, Jay, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, and I'm sure you've studied up on this, so uh, name some other parts of the district, at least in Boston, that, that are in this. Uh, so part of the South End in Bay Village, uh, basically everyone that votes at the Ben Franklin Institute, and then the entire downtown um, from uh, Causeway Street through the Leather District, uh, the waterfront to the Boston Common, basically everyone that votes at, at uh, Boston City Hall. Well, this is quite a mixture of people, because if you include what uh, lies outside the city, you know, from Cambridge, Winter Prevere, um, why do you want to represent all this? It's, it's exciting. It's, um, it's a great opportunity. Um, I've been a state representative for the last three years and have represented uh, part of Boston, part of Cambridge. Um, going to Winthrop and Revere, uh, there's a lot of the same issues, the concerns about um, the, whether the right type of development is happening, concerns about whether uh, people are getting the right opportunities. Um, one of the things I've pushed in the legislature is early education funding. Uh, which should be universally available, but so many families can't afford it. That's a concern throughout the district. Uh, criminal justice reform. Um, there's so many families that have been impacted by the opiate addiction uh, in every community in the district. And as a former prosecutor, that's something I've worked on in the legislature, um, and that resonates throughout the district. And then uh, this term, I've also focused on equal pay for women. And that's something that can help <laughs> people, uh, working families, across the district. Explain that a little bit more because, you know, uh, uh, there was a time we, we thought of professional women, but, you know, this is everybody. Yeah, um, the, the U.S. Department of Labor found that women generally in Massachusetts, where the gap is smaller than most states, it, there's a gap of about 20 percent between men and women for comparable work. And it really hits families because 57 percent of families in Massachusetts are headed by a woman. And so it, um, if they're not earning what they should, it's impacting the income of the family, and it's causing a whole host of, of issues regarding affordability of housing, uh, making sure people have enough, or children have enough food. And, um, and so uh, last term, it was great to be part of the effort to raise the minimum wage in Massachusetts. And I view this as, as the next step to really bring uh, every family in Massachusetts the income that they deserve. Uh, one of the other uh, pieces of legislation you worked on was the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. Yeah, um, that, that was something that, that I um, was filed before I came into the legislature, but I advocated for in the legislature, and it was great. Uh, it was one of my favorite votes where um, we combined the workers, Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights with the minimum wage increase and also stabilized the unemployment system without cutting benefits or um, cutting eligibility. And by reallocating risk be, be on those employers that use the system the most. Um, and uh, that was all one vote, and it was uh, great to be part of the effort to bring that to a vote. And then um, the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights ended up passing separately, but it was uh, a great session for workers. You also worked on the Healthy Kids Bill. Yeah, yeah uh, Healthcare for All is a great organization, and they uh, invited me to participate in a coalition made up of um, Children's Hosp Boston Children's Hospital, Greater Boston Food Bank, housing advocates, social welfare advocates. And the idea was, how can we make the lives of children whose families are receiving some sort of social benefit better? And so some things are simple, like a, a common application for the family. So if they apply for one benefit, like Mass Health, that would apply for uh, SNAP benefits as well and, and other social benefits, uh, which will save money on the government side because there'll be efficiency of approval of applications, but also save um, kind of convenience on the, on the other side. But then there's also things that we once we dove into. So there a lot of families that are homeless are being placed in hotels outside of public transit system where, and they don't have great access to, to transportation. Um, and what we found was kids who were in those hotels weren't getting to doctors um, to, for basic preventative care. And so that's cr creating uh, healthcare problems for those families. Well, there are parts of the, the district where, where um, one of the concerns is, is the cost of housing. Uh, East Boston, uh, the market has taken off like a rocket, uh, and a lot of people are being displaced. But what can a state senator do about that? Um, well, this is something I've dealt with as a state representative. I mean, uh, some of the 
biggest skyrocketing prices are in my state rep district. In the West End in particular, it has been outside of the seaport, the hottest place for development, and in, in Cambridgeport. And um, having the right, making sure that when buildings are built, that there is affordable housing in those buildings, making sure that the zoning laws make sense um, to encourage enough housing to, to satisfy demand, and, and then encouraging um, partnerships between nonprofits and the government. Uh, there was a project in the West End where I think the Walsh administration did a great job, where um, there were, it's entirely workforce housing or affordable housing. Um, and in order to do that, they had their own obligation. They brought in obligations from uh, two buildings on either side that are uh, under construction right now. They took advantage of federal programs, but then the city also created a special tax break uh, to create the final bit of workforce housing. And those creative partnerships, um, and I supported uh, those efforts and encouraged them. And I think that's something that uh, the elected officials should do when there are creative solutions out there uh, to encourage them. Some other things that I've supported in the legislature have been, uh, there's a bill pending to uh, where there are condemned city properties to turn them over to the trade unions, uh, apprenticeship programs uh, to allow people to learn how to build houses, uh, have the houses repaired, and then turn those over back to the city for affordable housing. Um, there's another provision that uh, I'm on the housing committee. I work closely with Kevin Honan, and who thinks about this stuff probably more than anyone in Massachusetts. And um, I've been happy to join him in those efforts. Uh, there's another bill uh, that I support to um, make sure that we keep expiring use housing, because there's a lot of affordable housing out there uh, that won't be affordable in the, in the next three to five years. And uh, it would create a, a trust fund that could be, uh, DHCD could draw down upon to give low interest loans to people to do capital improvements in exchange for more years of affordable housing. Well, one of the things that a lot of people are struggling with at the State House is how to satisfy the constituencies who want more charter schools funded by the state and also to prevent the, the loss of resources for district public schools. This is, this is not an easy one to solve, but uh, what do you think should be done? Um, you know, it, it's, uh, th I think there's a place for charter schools um, in, in our system, and, um, but I think before we expand on them, we really have to f fix some of the financing. Um, and one of the things that is happening, particularly in Boston, is there's been a decline in the number of, of uh, students in Boston public schools, but there hasn't been any changes in the number of teachers, the number of administrators, and very little in the, where the schools are. There's also been great population shifts where the northern part of the city has um, had a great population boom, southern part of the city not as much. And um, because of the change in administration and um, the Walsh administration had an interim uh, secretary of, uh, or commissioner of education for a while, um, and now I'm excited that, that the new uh, commissioner, Tommy Chain, is looking at this, these issues and um, hopefully we'll be able to reallocate things, hopefully save Boston some money and, and address some of the resource issues uh, that have occurred. Um, because with the, the sharp decline in, in students, you'd think that there'd be uh, some changes and, and hopefully that will help. Um, but in the meantime, um, I think having, giving parents some amount of choice uh, is important. Um, but before we really grow a second school district, basically, which is what charters have the potential to be, um, we have to be careful about uh, fixing some of the revenue issues. What about the revenue? I mean, one of the responses we're seeing already is a campaign to raise taxes uh, on a small percentage of the wealthiest people in the state. Do we need that kind of thing to get the resources? I think so. I mean, it, Massachusetts, uh, the Constitution prohibits a progressive income tax. Uh, that's failed on the ballot several times. I understand this issue has the best chance. And having those that can pay a little bit more uh, and a, can afford to do that, pay a little more, I think makes sense, especially because every tax we do now is a regressive tax. It hits those who can least afford to pay it, um, and there are great needs. Uh, one of the things that I like most about the millionaire's tax is it dedicates money specifically to public transit um, and education two places that I think everyone would agree we need to put more funding. One, one other issue that keeps coming up State House is, is whether uh, immigrants who don't have legal status should be able to get uh, driver's licenses in Massachusetts. Uh, uh, what should we be doing with that? We should 
allow them to get driver's licenses in Massachusetts. If, uh, you know, the Massachusetts has no role to play with respect to immigration status of people. If the federal government wants to deport somebody, they, that's up to them. Massachusetts can't do that. I remember as a prosecutor, uh, there was a guy that had a, you know, a 10 page criminal record and the probation officer and I were constantly encouraging um, ICE to deport the person. They had been uh, convicted multiple times. They were continuing and they, we couldn't get them convicted, uh, deported. Um, there was even a Boston Globe story before they were actually deported. And uh, uh, until the federal government acts, I think we have to deal with the people here. And personally, I don't think we, there should be people driving on the roads that don't have licenses and don't have insurance. And if, if people are here, they're going to drive. We should get them into the system. We should make sure they have insurance. And um, regardless of the immigration status, if the federal government wants to deport them, that, that's up to the federal government. The state just doesn't have a role. And I don't think we should pretend that it does. Farrell, this is an interesting time to be running in a special election. You have a little more responsibility at home, I understand. Yeah, uh, uh, three weeks ago, or three and a half weeks ago, my wife gave birth to our first son, uh, Henry. And uh, my wife and him are doing fantastic. All right, good to hear that. Thank you very much for being with us. All right, thanks. Candidate for state senator in the special election, Jay Livingstone. In a moment, we'll hear about summer programs offered by the Boston Centers for Youth and Families.